Hi, I'm Kayla from Ireland. Please like and subscribe. I was born to parents with very different personalities. While mom was a nature lover who preferred simple things in life, dad was a successful hotel chain owner, and he loved money more than anything else. When I was eight, dad left mom for another woman, and mom and I shifted to a small village in the countryside. I was so mad at dad for abandoning us. But slowly, I fell in love with village life. Mom opened a small farm and I joined the local school. On my first day, I was walking to school when I saw a skinny boy struggling with his bicycle stuck in the mud. Hey, let me help you. I pulled the bicycle with all my strength and got it out in seconds. Wow, you're so strong, like Hulk. Mm, Captain Marvel is more like it. When I reached school, I found out that boy was in my class and his name was Matthew. He was so thin that the other kids were making fun of him. Hey, be careful. If you bump into Matthew, you'll break his bones. Hold on to something, Matthew, or the wind's gonna blow you away. I felt really bad, but before I could say something, he saw me and his eyes lit up. See that girl? She pulled my bicycle stuck in the mud with just a finger. If you mess with me, she's gonna kick your butt. Right, Captain Marvel? Right. Since that day, Matthew and I started hanging out, and anyone who tried bullying him had to face me first. We became inseparable. One day in eighth grade, mom told me she got a call from dad, and he wanted to talk to me. He'd never visited once in all these years. All he'd done was send me some expensive present every birthday. I don't want to talk to him. His second wife left him, so he seemed upset. You should call him. I reluctantly did and he seemed happy to hear from me. My angel, I thought you'd forgotten your daddy. I tried to, but mom wouldn't let me. And then I just hung up. I did the same every time dad called, so he stopped after a while, and I wasn't complaining. Eventually, Matthew went to the city for college while I stayed back to learn farm management, but we stayed in touch. Then one day, I got a text from dad that left me worried. Kayla, I need you. I know I've been a terrible father, but I'm in a crisis right now and need you. Please don't abandon me. I tried calling him, but his number was switched off. When I told mom, she insisted I leave immediately to see what was wrong. So I packed my bag and caught the first train to the city. I'd just settled into my seat when I heard some noise from behind. I turned around to see a very handsome guy who seemed to have misplaced his ticket. Give me a new one. Here's my credit card. Sorry, sir. We only take cash. But I can pay for your ticket, if you don't mind. That'd be great. Thanks. I'll pay you back. He gave me a big dimpled smile and it made my heart flutter. When we reached the city, I found the stranger asleep, so I left quietly. I had to walk to dad's mansion now since I didn't have enough money left to take the bus. As I was walking down the street, a fancy car pulled up beside me. Hey, why didn't you wake me up? I didn't want to disturb you. Well, looking this handsome can be exhausting, so I was kind of tired. Anyway, here's the train fare, and as a thank you, I can drop you wherever you're headed to. When I gave him dad's address, he looked really surprised. You were gonna walk to this place? That's like three miles away. I know, but I, I'm sort of short on cash right now, so... And you still bought me a ticket? You sure you're not Mother Teresa's daughter or something? On our way to dad's mansion, the guy introduced himself as Trevor and talked nonstop about everything under the sun. It was quite an entertaining ride. But when I reached the mansion, I was shocked to see dad in bed looking sick. Dad, are you okay? Kayla, my love, I knew you wouldn't disappoint me. Dad told me he'd had a heart attack and the doctors had advised him to rest completely. He'd called me to take care of his business until he was healthy again. But I don't know a thing about your business. I'm here to help you, honey. It's not rocket science. And uh, here's my credit card. You'll need some uh, decent clothes to attend the meetings. I wasn't too thrilled about staying back, but dad's poor health left me no choice. I called Matthew to tell him I was in the city and went shopping with him. When I told him about dad, his jaw dropped. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me your dad's so rich? He's pretty famous. That makes you famous too. Wow, my friend's a celebrity. Stop it, I'm only here until he gets better. I'd almost forgotten I had a dad. If I had a dad like him, I'd make sure he never forgot me. That evening, dad told me to attend a dinner with a business associate. I reached the restaurant on time, but when no one turned up for an hour, I was about to leave when I bumped into something rock solid. Kayla, I'm here. What are your other two wishes? So Trevor was the business associate I was meeting? I... I want to use the restroom. That's your second wish? 
try something more creative, like, I want Trevor to pluck the stars for me, or I want Trevor to buy me a mansion on Mars. The entire evening, Trevor kept flirting with me. Feel my shirt. Know what it's made of? Boyfriend material. I think there's something wrong with my phone. Your number's not in it. This is supposed to be a business meeting, not a flirtathon. I know, but it's just so hard to concentrate when you're sitting there looking so gorgeous. That night when I got back home, Dad called me to his room. He was excited to know how the meeting went, and I lied to him that it went fine. I had to attend business meetings with Trevor almost every other day after that, and not a word of business was discussed. Trevor bombarded me with flowers, chocolates, and gifts, and I had to accept them for Dad's sake. And then one day, Dad dropped a bomb on me. Kayla, I want you and Trevor to get engaged. He's rich, handsome, and I've even talked to his dad. What? Engaged? I think you're expecting too much from me now. Honey, I'm just thinking about your future. Trevor can give you everything. I don't care about money. Don't you know me at all? How would I when you shut me out of your life? Kayla, I'm just an old man who wants the best for his daughter. I, I know I won't live long, and I want to see you well settled before I... Dad, please. You'll be fine. Okay, I'll, I'll date Trevor, and we'll see how things go from there. Although I had agreed to date Trevor, I had no intention of getting engaged to him. In fact, I was gonna make him reject me. So the next day, when Trevor came to pick me up in a frickin' helicopter and took me to a restaurant in London, I ate like a pig and burped right in his face. Your burp smells like sunflowers. What the fudge? As we were walking out, I purposely stepped on his expensive white shoes. This beautiful stain shall always remind me of you. Then he took me shopping, and I purposely bought the most expensive clothes I could find. But he didn't even flinch! You only spent 0.001% of my wealth. That's insulting. What's the matter with you? Can't you see that I'm not interested in dating you? Give me one solid reason why, and I'll back off. I don't like you. You look like poop. I'm used to girls falling all over me since I hit puberty, so try something else. Okay, don't tell Dad, but I'm into girls. Suddenly, Trevor pulled me in and kissed me. When his lips touched mine, I felt my heart explode. No, you're not. Um... What? You're not gay. Actually, the truth is, I... I like someone else. Who? And I said the first name that came to my mind. Matthew, my childhood best friend. He's studying here in the city, and we meet often. If that's the case, I'll tell your dad things didn't work out between us. But I want to meet this Matthew first. That day I called Matthew and told him everything. He assured me he'd act so convincingly as my boyfriend that Trevor wouldn't suspect a thing. So the three of us decided to meet for a movie. Matthew kept holding my hand and calling me his sweet dumpling every two minutes. Your ears are so perfect, my sweet dumpling. My sweet dumpling. Do you want some more popcorn? God, he was the king of overacting. If you call me sweet dumpling one more time, I'm gonna kick your butt. But I'm just trying to be convincing. Just do as I say. When I nudge your arm, you lean over and kiss me on the cheek, okay? A few seconds later, I nudged Matthew's arm, but that made his popcorn bucket fall. As I bent to pick it up, Matthew ended up kissing Trevor <gasps> instead of me. Ultimately, Trevor figured out Matthew wasn't my boyfriend. With no other excuses, I had to date Trevor. But it wasn't bad at all. The more time we spent together, the more I started to enjoy his company. One day, we went on a hike to a lake and swam for hours and had a picnic, and it was kind of amazing. A few days later, I was in my car at a traffic light when I spotted Trevor, and I called him. Hey, you free to meet up for coffee? Not right now. I'm just on my way to meet my other girlfriend. Don't you get tired of being sleazy? I love how jealous you sound right now. Okay, bye! Wait, I was kidding. But yeah, I can't meet tonight. I'm at Dad's office right now, and I have lots to do. Right. See you later. The jerk was lying. What if he actually was seeing someone else? I asked the driver to follow his car, and to my surprise, Trevor led us to an orphanage. When I crept in behind him, I saw a bunch of kids running towards him as he handed them all toys. One girl leapt into his lap, and he was so sweet to her it melted my heart. And suddenly, he looked straight at me. So, you caught me with my girlfriend. Meet Lizzie. After 
were spending some more time with the kids, we both left, and I asked him why he'd lied. It's always been my little secret. Even Dad doesn't know. I just really like spending time with these kids. Maybe I thought you'd think I'm some sort of softy. And why is that a bad thing? Do you really know anything about girls? Suddenly, I leaned in and kissed him. He looked surprised and then kissed me back. Things were great, but two days later, I got a shocking call from Matthew. Kayla, I saw your dad at a restaurant today with someone and he looked perfectly fine. They were laughing, smoking cigars. What? But dad can hardly get out of bed. But Matthew was pretty sure he'd seen dad, so I fished out his doctor's number to ask him about his health. Mr. Smith is great. He came in for his annual checkup last week and he's completely fine. Dad was lying to me all this time? When I went to confront him, I found him in his bed as usual. Honey, can you please take me for a walk outside? Drop the act, Dad. I know you're perfectly fine. I just had a word with your doctor. Smart girl. You're my daughter after all. How I wish I wasn't. I'm packing my bags and leaving right away. Don't make that mistake or your mom might lose her farm. Dad then told me that mom's farm had been running in losses for months. Apparently, she's been giving out stuff to the poor folk for free. Your mom's an emotional fool, but I'm not. I need you to get engaged with Trevor to get his dad to invest in my business. We have a deal. So, I'm nothing more than a business deal to you? Don't take it personally, honey. I'm just a practical man. Now, your mom's taken some loans, and I can pay them off if you agree. Otherwise, the bank will be going after her very soon, and she'll lose everything. That came as a punch to my gut. I stormed out of Dad's room and ran straight into Trevor. You knew about this deal my dad made with yours? I... I can't lie to you, Kayla. My dad's been after me to settle down, and he threatened to cut off my inheritance if I didn't get engaged to you. Stop. That's all I needed to hear. That day, I packed my bags and left. I knew Dad could ruin our lives, but I was too heartbroken to care. When I reached the village and asked Mom about the farm's finances, she revealed something shocking. Our finances were in pretty bad shape, but today, someone deposited a huge amount in my bank account. I tried finding out who that was, but I couldn't get any details. We used that money to sort out the farm's finances, and soon, everything was back to normal. One day, I came back from the market to find Trevor working in the vegetable garden with Mom. I hired him. He said he was in need of money, and we could use an extra pair of hands. But Mom, you don't even know him. He looks like a nice, decent boy. She didn't know what a big, fat liar he was. Why are you here? What's your plan? The plan is to make you forgive me so we can date again. After the way you've treated me? No chance. Listen to me, please. It's true, my dad asked me to date Mr. Smith's daughter, but I had no idea that girl would turn out to be you. I fell for you the moment you rushed into the train that day. Trust me, Kayla, you're unlike any other girl I know. Why should I trust you, Trevor? It could still be your dad's sick plan. I've parted ways with dad. After you left, he wanted me to date another girl, and when I refused, he cut off my inheritance. And just so you know, your dad's gone bankrupt. He desperately needed my dad's money to revive his business. But when things didn't work out, the bank sold his hotels. Well, my dad totally deserved it. Trevor kept working hard at our farm for weeks, but I still felt too scared to trust him again. One day, I found him sneaking out of the farm and followed him. He'd gone to the bank, and when I later inquired why he was there, I found out he was the person who deposited money in mom's account. When I asked Trevor about it, he told me the truth. I overheard Mr. Smith threatening you that day. I had some savings and decided to help you out, just as you did that day, on the train. I couldn't help hugging Trevor, and when he hugged me back, my life seemed perfect.